the period we're looking at here is from approximately 300 BCE right up to and even through the Christian era, because as we'll see, this goddess veneration was very persistent, very magnetic and beloved. Because of that, so people will often point out, and I do know this, Oset is the spelling of the name of the great goddess. And what happens is maybe New Kingdom or even earlier, the T pronunciation falls away. And linguists tell me that her name would have been pronounced in Kemetic, more like Esse. And that T, like in, in Hebrew and other Afro-Asiatic languages, is a feminine ending. Uh, same way like it's bost, not busted. That T is just there as a marker. But uh, so the pronunciation Esse would have been among the Egyptians. Along come the Greeks and Alexander of Macedon conquers Egypt or actually Alexander, um, Alexander does that. And then uh, his, his successor, Ptolemy, takes over the rulership, colonizes Egypt. And so you have this huge Hellenization, which you can see already in the pictures I'm showing you here. Really, really strong Greek influence. And then later the Roman. And so in that time span, the Greeks, even before that, actually, the Greeks took the name Esse and they added the Is feminine ending from Greek onto the end. So that's why Isis is how they would have said it. We say Isis, or you can say Osset if you want to go back to the primordial. Um, but the same way like the sacred city of the goddess Nate in, in the Delta, Sa or Zao in Kemetic. And then the Greeks come along and they take Sa and they plunk that Is ending. So Sais. Sais is not a Kemetic word. It's drawn on one. So that, that's the explanation about the name. And I'm going to be sometimes referring to Isis because that is the, the, the way that these are referred to in the time span. Okay. So, um, and then also this name, Har Harpocrates, this is a Greek word. It refers, I think, to uh, the son Horus or son, Horus the child, I think is the, the, the Egyptian term this is drawn on. And so this is a sculpture of the late period. We have many millennia of Egyptian history going all the way back into the pre-dynastic era. And there's this very long continuity in Egyptian culture. And, and this is part of that. This is more her classical representation. You can see the throne icon, which is what offset means is throne, really representing sovereignty. And so the pairing of offset and Osar, Osiris, it, sister and brother, so there's the major cultural pattern, but then also the patriarchal part, marrying sisters to brothers. And this is kind of a, a attempt to solve the contradiction between those systems. So if you have both, then there, you don't have to directly confront the trans transition to patriarchy. Anyway, Aset suckling Heru or Horus is already a theme in iconography going back thousands of years before the Greeks ever set foot in the soil of Egypt. But she persists in this very late period after from the fourth century BC onward. And the hand gesturing to the breast or the child in the lap, this is late. And you see Hathor here also in the pillar with actually it's the sistrum of Hathor. But um, this, this nursing, this, this Isis as milk giver is already a longstanding theme. And so in Latin, this is called Isis lactans, or they would have said Isis lactans, the milk giver. And we see all kinds of different styles representing her statues. I think this one might be from Cyprus. I don't have this labeled. And a lot of these, if you're interested in researching it, are in a book by somebody whose last name is Tran, and it's called Isis Lactans. There's a whole book with some of the many plates here. I'm, I'm drawing on that great source because very specialized study on it. But this is my favorite image from, it's from the Fayum, which is a lake area in Northern Egypt. And you can see the transformations in the representation of Isis. Uh, interesting how, how the baby here is really an afterthought. It's all about the majesty of the great goddess. But what they've done is they've shrunken her horned solar headdress. It's there. And it has two uh, feathers, ostrich feathers behind it, which is a known form. 
But more prominent are these wheat ears. And we're going to be talking about the syncretism between Isis and Demeter in a little bit. Her features, though, are Egyptian, but there's this very Greek representation of the robes and also the knot of Isis, which would have been around <coughs> her belly, is up, it's moved up in the Hellenistic art between her breasts. So there are all these transformations in the symbolism that, um, and you can see really stylistically, if you didn't know this was Isis, you could easily be forgiven for thinking it came from Greece. And this one's a little more in the Egyptian mode. You can, you can compare and contrast with this. Here's an example of the belt of Isis. It's nearly always red, and it represents the life-giving blood of Isis, the womb of Isis. Uh, the robes were a single sheet of linen that was wrapped around the body, and this belt was necessary to hold the garment on. And here she's shown as priestess with the system. We're going to see that theme recurring quite a lot. And then, but this here is the chet representing this belt. So the loop that goes around her belly, the knot, which we could take symbolically as the cervix, we could take this as the vagina, we could even take these um, hanging coils as the fallopian tubes. It did represent the womb of Isis. And there were spells, let the blood of Isis and the whole spirits of Isis and the words of power of Isis be mighty to protect, and then the name of the person in the spell and prevent anything from being done to them, which they abhor. So tens of thousands of these carnelian amulets were found in burials. They were worn by people. They were kept in houses because it was protective. It was blessing, but it, there's this very strong protective valence over that. And so this is the classical representation of Aset as Weret Hekau, the great of magic is sometimes how you see that translated into English. And the sistrum with the half of her head because she is as a priestess. The belt of Isis also shows up. It turns out it took me 50 years to find these practically, but uh, holding up these belts as ceremonial objects of protection at the very portal to the burial chamber. And this is somewhere in the Valley of Kings so she's paired here with her sister, Nebthet. So it's not just Aset and Asar, it's also Aset and Nebthet, or Nephthys, as the Greeks would have put it. The pairing of the sister-sister, which is very important in the story of the death of, of Asar. Down here, we have exactly the same motif coming from Meroe, which is thousands of miles to the south and in uh, the middle of Sudan. But they had very heavily... Uh, influence from Kemet and also shared cultural roots with Kemetic civilizations so that this theme is there. 